I've reviewed a few three inch ducted cine whoops recently and I'm constantly asked which is best. So here's my best buy guide to ducted cine whoops. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. I'm going to be taking the Chandrone Squirt V2, an iFlight Mega B V2, the iFlight Bumblebee and a Diatone Taycan and directly comparing them to help you decide which is the best Cine Whoop for you. And I'll be scoring them on price, value, component quality, FPV camera choice, build quality, weight, noise, they're all noisy, duct quality and performance, overall design, flight performance, that's Cine Whoop performance, not acro, and how easy they are to upgrade and improve. Now I'm basing this on the 4S analog camera versions of these quads rather than the more expensive DJI air unit options and some of the scores are my opinion but you're free to make up your own minds. I've also chosen and priced the XM receiver which is usually the cheapest option. First up is the iFlight Mega BV2 priced at £227 or around $280. It's actually quite expensive, so I've given this 60%. The component quality is pretty good and it uses the Cadex Rattel, so that's an easy 90% for me. It's fairly light, the weight comes in at 256 grams. By the way, I've based the weight percentage score on the lightest of the group, which is the Squirt, as you'll see later. Noise-wise, it's typically silly whoop noisy, but it's not too bad, so I've given it 75%. I based the noise rating on what I measured on my other video about noisy cine whoops. So don't forget to check that out. The ducks are pretty awful. They're 3D printed PLA and break with the slightest touch. And their design doesn't really add any performance, so it's 40% for those. The design is actually quite good, well apart from the ducks, and it's a moderately stiff frame. Performance is surprisingly good and you can even do light acro if you're careful. It's not that stable when flying slowly, so you need to be deft with the sticks to get smooth footage. 65%. You can upgrade it. I designed some tough TPU ducts for this and there's enough room inside the frame to add a DJI air unit, so it's 70% upgradable. Overall, this averages out at a score of 71%. Next is the iFlight Bumblebee, priced at £225 or again around $280. It's a bit cheaper than the Mega B, so value is 60%. The component quality is fine, but the FPV camera again is the Cadex Retail, so that's got 90%. The build quality is about the same as the Mega B, at 80%, and it's a little bit heavier. Not much though. Noise, well, <laughs> this is the noisiest and scroochiest of the group, and it only scores 60% from me. The ducts are injection moulded, so they're strong, but the finish is actually quite poor. It's almost like they used a 3D print for the master mould. And they aren't really ducts, so I'm giving them 60%. The design is very nice when you first look at it, but there's just so many screws you need to undo to get inside if you need to. So only 70% I'm afraid. Performance, again, iFlight have tried a little bit too hard with all their RPM filtering and tuning. It's hard to fly slowly and smoothly and suffers from really bad yaw washout. It's a sad 50% from me. And much the same as the Mega B, you could upgrade components, but you're not gonna be able to change the ducks really. Overall, this gives us a score of 70% for the Bumblebee. The Diatone Taycan is the Cine Whoop I've reviewed most recently, so it's fresh in my mind. It's priced at £178 or around $225, so it's great value for money. That's a solid 85%. The FPV camera is a big letdown for me. The Runcam Nano 2 isn't great in my opinion, so I'm only going to give that 60%. It's not that it's that bad, it's just the Cadex Rattel has a larger sensor and is fundamentally better and would have been a better choice for Diatone. 
The build quality, well, it's just top notch, really very good. So 90% for that. At 295 grams, this is the heaviest one here. So it only gets 84%. And for noise, it was between the Mega B and the Bumblebee. That's 73% from the measured value. Although the ducts aren't really giving any duct type extra performance, they are injection molded, great quality and very strong. So they get 70%. And the overall design is typically fantastic diatone. Lots of small design details and touches, very well executed, a solid 90%. Plus the motors run very cool. The coolest of any of this bunch of cine whoops. Just like the other two, you could upgrade this, but not by much, so 70%. And that gives us a total score of 77%, which makes it top of the pile. And now we've got the Shendrone Squirt V2. Unlike the others, you'll need to build this yourself, which means you have complete control over the choice of components. So I've based these scores on my Squirt that I built last year and then upgraded recently. I spent around £150 or $190 on parts for this, although you will have to print your own ducts. So this is awesome value at 90%. And because of that, you can choose the best components in your budget, which for me means the component quality and the FPV camera both get 90%. Now the build quality is 100% because I'll assume you'll give it the time and the attention it deserves. Weight wise, this is the lightest of the group at 240 grams. And I use this as the baseline for calculating the weight score on the other quads. So the squirt gets 100%. And this was the quietest of the four that I tested recently and gets 80%. Although all cine whoops are noisy. Now the ducks of the squirt are the only ones that are proper ducks. They're designed to give extra thrust because of the way that they're shaped to take advantage of the Bernoulli effect. And I know these have been fine tuned by Shen Drones with several mods to make them work really well. They are a hard design to 3D print in TPU though. They've got very thin walls at the bottom. So I'm just giving them 80%. The overall design is simple, but it isn't as stiff as the Taycan or the Bumblebee. So I'm giving it 80%. And the performance is about the same as a Taycan, although the motors do get a bit warm. And I think that's because the frame isn't stiff enough, 75%. Now you can pretty much do whatever you want to the squirt to upgrade it. People have even added two axis gimbals. So it's very flexible to whatever your requirements are. It's an easy 100% for this. This averages out at a score of 88%. Overall then, we've got the Bumblebee in last place with 70%, closely followed by the Mega Bee at 71%. And although the Squirt takes first place over the Taycan with 88% and 77% respectively, in practice there's actually two winners. If you want a plug and play Cine Whoop that's well built and ready to go out and have some Cine Whoop fun, just buy the Dieton Taycan. If you want a Cine Whoop with lots of flexibility for pro filming jobs and is the quietest and best performer, just build yourself a Squirt V2. The Squirt is still my favorite. Now I know I'll get comments about how well people's Cine Whoop flies and how cool the motors are for other quads that I've marked down. But I've tested these as they're delivered with the factory tune and components. The Squirt is a bit different, so you will need to tune it yourself. If you've got a tune or an improvement for any of these, please leave a comment to let everyone know. Don't just troll it. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please do the subscribe belly thing to get notified when I post new content. I'll see you next time. to play your own game cover it up don't let them know what you're thinking i bet you never tell them how it feels i bet
that you never even tried to be.